um, well, I've been told I've got poor connection. I hope everything's okay. I've been, I'd like to help her because she's written to me and this is something that I do find comes up quite a lot. So let me read you what she said. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here. She's balancing the fears around IVF. So she said, I so wanted to do this naturally, but maybe I have to accept that I can't. Um, she does have fertility issues such as PCOS and her partner has had a vasectomy. She said, I had a dream and I got pregnant via IVF, so maybe that was a sign. I'm trying to get my head around it as I was so resistant to having a child via IVF. But my partner has said that he can't see me go through this every single month. She then goes on to say, this is really affecting my emotions. Trying for a baby is really hard. I'm struggling to cope with daily life, let alone even getting in a positive mind about my fertility. I've been tracking my cycle and it seems that we've been trying for about 10 months now. Each month I have had faith that I'm going to get pregnant and I'm losing that hope. I am sorry, I know I'm just being so negative right now. I was so upset last month and pulled myself through it and did my best with everything. I just feel I keep getting knocked down every time and I pick myself up each month. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but each month, if it doesn't happen, I just say it will happen next month and then I surrender. But maybe I need to stop saying or meditating or even visualizing that this is going to happen next month as it's setting me up to get upset if it doesn't happen. She then, there's a three, third part to this. She then said that her mum saw a psychic and told her that this woman who's written in from the fertility help group is not gonna get pregnant till February next year. Okay, so let's talk about all these three factors that's happening for her, and I'm just gonna put that down now. Okay, thank you so, so much for submitting your question, and this is what I do every single Wednesday. I'm here answering your very raw and real questions. Your fertility journey isn't meant to be hard. I don't want it to be hard. If it's hard work, then let me guide you out of the difficult times, because really, when you've got tension and stress and anxiety and worries and fears and coupled with that beliefs, um, you know, with the, this psychic reading that your mum was given and in addition to that, you're trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing. So you're getting to the point now where your subconscious mind, which remembers everything, keeps associating fertility as something painful, something that causes you distress, heartache, deep, deep, deep emotional pain. And it is there to protect you and saying, please don't continue down this route because fertility means pain, hard work, disappointment, and it's gonna protect you from, from going there. That's how the brain works. The brain is always, always geared towards the path of least resistance. Whatever's the easiest thing to do is where the brain wants to take you, which is what leads me to the next phase, which is in my online Fertile Lifestyle course, module two goes deeply into the mind mastery section. So mind mastery, how to master your mind. This is so important. This is the key to everything you have mentioned here. Um, there are other support modules that can support you as well, but we can dive first of all into module two, which is why I've got it as module two, because this is where the fastest transformation can take place. In just 11 days, you can begin to access what exactly is happening in your subconscious mind and then how to create the new neural pathways. So, okay, we've all, we started with the fear around IVF. Hey, Renee, thanks so much for watching. So we started with the fear that you have around IVF. Now, if you are scared to do something, then you're obviously creating tension in the body. Now, I have personally been approached by several different IVF clinics over the years who have asked for my guidance and support to help their clients to minimize their stress and anxiety around IVF. So the thing is, 
they said to me that when they do embryo transfer, where they are transferring the embryo into the woman's womb during the IVF process, the tension in the body is, is replicated within the womb, within the uterus. So not, not your mental tension is just restricted to your brain, it's actually goes throughout the whole body. The whole of your body tenses up, including your uterus, including your womb, which makes it difficult for them to insert the embryo. And then it's difficult for the lining to correspond instead of being all juicy and in flow, quite literally, to help create a beautiful baby blanket that helps to anchor and secure the baby. And it's like your, the mother's lifting her her arm and helping her, her child to nestle underneath her. That's what's happening in your womb. So your, your uterus, your womb is not being flexible. It's not opening up, it's not softening, it's not catering for this embryo to anchor into the lining like a beautiful blanket or a protective arm of the mum. So it's important that you overcome that fear. So again, diving into the Mind Mastery module. There's two sections with that. There's there's two levels. So you already consciously know you have a fear around IVF. You don't need to delve into the subconscious mind over that. Yet, you can first start clearing what's coming up consciously. So you'd you'd clear what's coming up consciously and create a new neural pathway around erasing that fear. So it's it's an easy to follow process, but there are several steps involved. So you know what to do, just dive into the course and be guided. There's videos that guide you, and if you're not a, an audiovisual person, then you can be guided through the text as well. So there's a lot of um, information. And there's also the support audios that, that you can listen to. There are also the meditations, and I specifically recommend the Yoga Nidra meditations or the Mind Mastery meditations, because they will help to re-anchor for you. This is a term that we use where we're anchoring a new belief. So. I now feel at ease and grace about my fertility um, could be something that's giving you less pressure. So something that combats your fear around IVF or more, more precisely, and this is how I've helped other clients, is I'll say, I or my body is baby ready. I'm open to receive baby whenever they're ready to come and however they want to come. On that note, I have spoken to spiritual philosophers around the baby's soul wanting to come down you know, do they prefer being an IVF baby? Do they prefer being a natural baby? And the response I got was they never prefer to be an IVF baby because their energy field isn't fully formed, which makes it difficult for them to um, interact with all of the different layers of themselves. It's difficult for me to, to really simplify this in, in basic terminology, but in module one, I talk about this. So you're able to dive deep into understanding who you really are and what, what you constitute, what your energy field is, and how everything moves from your energy field, the outer perimeter of your energy field, your aura, and filters in through your spiritual body, your mental body, your emotional body, and then into the physical body. So things happen in these outer layers, first of all. They filter into the physical, then they create the physical disharmony. And we need to bring you back into a state of harmony. We move in waveforms. Everything is waveforms in the body. We're electromagnetic beings. So without going too much into the uh, philosophy and the science behind it, because really uh, there is a whole science behind this. And so I just kept keeping it quite brief for you in this video, but letting you know that if you look at module one, it will help you to understand how we can filter and work with those energy layers. Now, if you do have an IVF baby, you can do um, different parenting skills to help the development of your child. Because they don't have a fully developed energy field, you can then help them to understand you better, to communicate better, to have the emotional intelligence which can be um, slightly hindered through IVF. And some even say, there's different research coming out, that there can be neural damage with IVF. And I'm not here to scare you with that, but what we want to do is build upon a, a vision and manifest that your baby is perfectly healthy even if you are going through the IVF route. And there's different techniques around that and I'm here to guide you through as and when that arises. Because as you know, we are more than physical, we are spiritual beings. Now Renee, you've been giving me a few little comments that say, yes, Renee says that makes sense to clear those blockages that are stopping fertility. Yeah, 100%. 
I love the yoga nidra meditations and being able to add my own special little affirmation. Yes, they're completely unique to you and I do guide you on how to use a specific affirmation which you repeat at the beginning and toward the end of the meditation. Repeat it three times at the beginning, three times at the end, but it puts your brain to a state where your brain's like a sponge. So does the other techniques that I have as part of the mind mastery technique. So when your brain's like a sponge, you absorb whatever it is. So if you're saying that I'm open to receive baby, however, whenever baby's ready to come, because I am ready now, because we need to work in the now moment, then baby can come. And that's a very freeing, liberating, um, sort of manifestation for lack of a better word. It's more of a, a proclaiming where, where you're truly believing. And that's what I want to talk about next. So when you're getting too scared to fire the rockets of desire, to fire the rockets of hope, when you're getting a little tired because every month you're hoping and you're hoping and you're hoping and to your level of awareness, you truly believe that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, but then it's not happening. Okay. It's not happening because two things are at play. Now, I don't know the timeline with the psychic reading. I'm not too sure when the psychic reading happened and when you, when your mum told you that you're not going to have your baby till February. But I would want you to clear that as soon as possible with a yoga nidra to say, I am ready to have my baby now, but in the format that I talk about in the course. And in addition to that, dive a little deeper into consciously, do you believe that? Does that kind of make sense to you? Could you surrender into that and just be like, you know what, I, I know I'm getting pregnant in February, so I'm just going to have fun between now and then. And with that kind of attitude, you are completely liberating yourself. There's no more blockages because you have a strong belief now it's February. And you have a, therefore a, a pass to say, carry on with what you're doing, enjoying your fertile lifestyle course. Don't get too hung up because by February you will be pregnant. Okay, that's quite a, a promising and uplifting perspective as opposed to, oh my goodness, that's months and months away. Like, I want to be pregnant now. I wanted to be pregnant 10 months ago. Time is an interesting thing when it comes to fertility because it's not about what you mentally want. It's about what your body is ready to hold and to do. And secondly, what people do forget is baby has free will. And there is no time like linear time in spirit world. There is no time like we have. So there's no difference between coming this lifetime or next lifetime or coming now versus in 24 months. To them, it's, you know, there's no time. So that's why it's important when you're working with time. And in my healings, I bring in time lords, for example. That's what I've been trained to do. Um, what we want to do is, is, work with the fact that you are bringing them in now. You are ready now. Your body is ready now, but you need to believe that. You might not actually believe that your body is ready now. So the fact that you have PCOS, you, as, I, as I know you on a deeper level, I do feel that you've eradicated all of your PCOS symptoms and you've managed your PCOS super well with all the supplements that I've been guiding you on. And like you say, you, 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 know, you don't have any other ailments. So I think that's got to be put aside but maybe in your psyche just maybe because this is what doctors seem to do is they, t they tell you when you have PCOS it's going to be more difficult for you to get pregnant it's going to take you longer to get pregnant so you've potentially got an unconscious block which makes you believe I'm going to take longer than the average person to get pregnant the average person takes 12 months trying so maybe you've already got an unconscious block that hey if it takes the average person 12 months maybe it's going to take me 18 months or 14 months, you know what I mean? So we need to dive deeper into the fertility my mastery. Dive deeper into module two, because that will help you to unearth what is there unconsciously, what is blocking me? Because at the end of the day, if you genuinely did believe that it was going to happen, it would happen. Honestly, now let me give you an example about this. This is something slightly different to fertility, but something personal to me. I have a belief that London is perfectly safe and I can walk around at any time, single white female, blonde hair, middle of the night, doesn't matter, I'm, I'm safe. And when people come and visit, they're always really paranoid about zipping up their handbags and holding their handbags really close and, and putting important documents close to their body. And I have a belief that I'm going to be fine. It's not going to happen to me. And the funniest thing happened yesterday. I was doing a photo shoot and I had a bag full of 
different shoes. And in that bag, I just decided to put my purse in. And we saw some boys who are about 20, very cashed up. They had all these bags from these designer shops. So of course I thought, you know, they're very well manicured, manicured hair, um, tight jeans, like three quarter length jeans, like very um, metrosexual boys. And they were just, you know, strutting their stuff, acting like models and just being a bit silly. And I just thought, yep, yeah, whatever, I'll just put my bag down here and 10 meters away, we're just gonna do a bit of a shoot because we're kind of moving around some different plants on the roof terrace. And as the photographer was taking photos, she began screaming at them like, what are you doing? And then they, they laughed and one of the friends said, oh, he's just taken your wallet because he stuck his hand into the bag where my shoes were, pulled out my purple wallet, bright purple Mulberry wallet, so very, very obvious. And uh, <laughs> she just responded by saying, yeah, no shit, Sherlock, which made them really, really laugh. And the guy laughed so much that he just threw the purse back into the bag. He could have just run off. So there I was trusting the situation, not even thinking it was gonna happen. Now she's very paranoid herself, because she's, so maybe she'd brought that energy into to my energy field, to, to the experience, because that's her belief that London's dangerous and people are stealing from you all the time, etc., etc., etc. I don't have that belief. And I was totally shocked, because there I was in heels, tight dress, I thought, oh my goodness, I can't even run over there. Like, if he's gonna make a run for it, I'm stuck here. But she stormed over there, and as she was storming over there, he just threw the purse back into the bag. And I just was like, oh, that's all great, okay, let's carry on. And of course the photographer was really shaken up. Like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You know, so bringing everything much closer to us, which is obviously a good thing to do. Um, and it was, she was very shaken up, but I genuinely wasn't. So I was so grateful, so grateful, because my husband bought me that purse as a birthday present. Um, that it, and of course all the cards and everything, it'd be a nightmare to, to go through that. But it just doesn't resonate with me. I don't have that belief. So when things like this happen, and other people put their beliefs into my field, it doesn't affect me. And the same thing can happen with your fertility journey. Your mind is super powerful, more powerful than we realize. We human beings are incredibly powerful. What we think we create, we create our fears. And this is something you need to be mindful of. Oh, thank you for watching, Claire. Um, very nice to have you, have you on board. So getting quite passionate about that. Don't know how much of the story you just heard. But this is why it's so important to be mindful of what you're thinking and mindful of continuing with the Mind Mastery, Fertility Mind Mastery section in my online Fertile Lifestyle course. So, okay, we've tackled the first issue, which I mentioned. So the fact that this client has PCOS and therefore has unconscious beliefs that it's gonna be more difficult for her to get pregnant. So how is she gonna combat that fear? She's gonna do the Mind Mastery and and help create new neural pathways that dissolve the fear. And when she creates new neural pathways, they're gonna feel really good. She's gonna be open to receiving this baby. She's going to know we have to activate the belief and the trust, the belief in your body and the belief that, that the universe, that God, whoever it may be, is going to provide this baby for you. It could be the belief in your baby's spirit that it is coming. And I tell you what, it is coming because you have the yearning. You have that yearning activated within you. You don't just get that yearning because you want something. You have the yearning because baby or baby spirits are hovering. Now, I had a client and she had a very strong yearning. She had her first child and she was able to have him naturally. And then six months after having the first child, she was desperate to have the second. Really, really, really strong desire to have the second. But the first year went by, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and then the fifth. In that time, she spent nearly a quarter of a million pounds with all these different clinics. They're getting her to fly all different countries to try and clear some stuff that had come up, um, physical stuff that was manifesting in the body after giving birth to her first child, because your body can change after the birth of your first child, your immune system can change too, so things do, do change. And um, she was 43 when she came to me. She came to me through a recommendation from a doula who also does craniosacral therapy and said, see Fiona for her powerful fertility meditations. Now this lady used to work in finance in the city in London. 
and very, very straightforward. She said, I've never done meditation before. I've never even known about fertility meditation. But you know what? If you tell me to do this, I'm going to do it. I stopped working. This is my life. I'm focusing 100% on having this baby. So you, you just tell me whatever fertility meditations I need to do. So I got her to do the whole program, obviously, because that will just cover everything physically, mentally, emotionally. And, and by changing the environment of the cells, you're able to then change your fertility because you're, you're going to change your cells into thrive mode. And then you're creating a new resonance, which matches baby's resonance. And then that's when baby can come through. So her issue, yes, there was a physical issue, which we helped to dissolve. I've got very powerful supplements, which are called Powerfully Pure, by the way. And those supplements and the healings dissolve the issue that that had arisen. It's a very unusual issue. I'm not going to go into too many specifics about it. It's it's not um, it's not common things like fibroids or cysts or anything like that. It was quite a complicated thing, and I don't I want to respect her privacy. And um, I'm happy to speak to one-to-one -one clients about this, but not not in public. So we discovered that she didn't actually have a covenant, a covenant between her and her baby. So that needs to be created. So you can have a contract. And, and often the fathers have a contract. Very rare that fathers will have a covenant, but you can tell if they do have a covenant because they're very hands-on with the children. So for women that have um, partners that they're not actually having a long-term relationship with, or women that have children with partners and they soon divorce and the men don't get that much involved with the children, those men have a contract with the child, not a covenant. Each mother has a covenant with the child. Something that was preordained before this life where baby chose you already, you've already been pre-chosen and you've already said yes. And often there are conditions around that. And so baby's like, okay, I'm going to come down. You're going to clear your bloodline issues and then I'm going to come down. And you're like, yes, great. Yes, I'll be there. But some things could have happened in your life where you've moved off your destiny line. Our destiny line moves like a snake, you know, like harmonics, like I was mentioning earlier. And if you think about it, so say you're traveling and then something happens to jolt you off your destiny line. You still keep moving, but your destiny line is not over here anymore. It's over here, which means how that affects you is you might be just off kilter when it comes to meeting the one. You might be just off kilter when it comes to having your baby in, in the, you know, by the age of 38, for example, and you end up having your baby at the age of 47 or 48 because you're slightly off your destiny path. So doing things where you're bringing yourself back onto your destiny path, which is what I was talking about earlier, as a fertility healer and activator, this is what I work with. And I have an advanced deployment with, with this and I also work closely with Kuan Yin. She's the main goddess whom I work with, goddess of fertility and abundance. And I'm also working recently with goddess Isis and Merlin. So a lot of transformation can take place. You're just relaxing on a table and I do all the work but it's very 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 deep very very thorough and able to help heal bloodline issues that I was mentioning earlier and help you to transmute the things which you don't need to pass on to baby baby doesn't want that that's not part of the deal so a lot of this stuff seems a little bit woo-woo but when you hear the truth you know it so if you can listen to this because sometimes we reject the truth two or three times, then when we hear it the third time, and maybe from a different person, or maybe you're gonna start being activated to this information, you'll start reading new books about it. Um, you know, Carolyn Miss is a famous author of Sacred Contracts. She's also got that in audiobook. That might be something that you could dive into. There's other, other authors as well. There's a lot of information out there. And I just think if you can open your mind, open your mind to a larger perspective, and open your mind to the fact that your mind is creating your reality. So focus on positive thoughts. I'm going to talk about that in a second because that's the last thing that this, this lady had brought up. How to focus on positive thoughts so that you have a high vibrational state. Your body will stay healthy, non-acidic, and you'll be able to match baby's vibration. But the key with all of this is keeping your hope alive through belief. When you create a belief, which is just a long held thought, that's all a belief is. When you create a belief, which is congruent with you being a mum, very, very soon, very, very soon. Um, you might wanna say this summer, or you might wanna say 
this winter. Like it depends on, on what feels real for you. You can't fake it. So you couldn't just sit here now and go, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm manifesting, I'm pregnant. Because your brain's like, yeah, but you're not. Hopefully you are, and hopefully there's a real reality behind it, but you know what I mean? You can't just say, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, because you just can't fake it. But you can initiate a belief. So for example, I always knew from a young age, I was going to have a husband with three children, and they were all gonna be blonde and blue eyes. Now that's kind of weird, because I've always been attracted to mixed race men, and for 10 years, that's all I dated was two mixed race men who could never give me blonde haired babies with blue eyes, but I just had this knowing, this inner belief. It wasn't a desire, um, because my personal preference is to have a mixed race child. That's, that's what I'm, I'm attracted to, and I wish I was mixed race, so therefore I'd wanna have a mixed race child too. So I just had this inner belief that that's what was gonna happen. I was gonna be with a divorced man with these three children, and it just happened, it happened. Um, so this is what I mean, you, you need to be mindful of your beliefs and being conscious of what you're believing because you will manifest them. Oh, thank you for watching, Charlotte, thank you for joining, and Claire, I'm glad you're enjoying watching and listening. So let's now talk about the last aspect that this client brought up, and that is being positive. How do you maintain the positivity when month after month you are getting more and more disappointed, your heart is breaking? You're feeling less energized, less, less positive. And it's like, how do I pick myself up? Because last month I truly believed it was going to happen, but it hasn't happened. And because the subconscious mind is being really strong with you now and going, you know what? Don't go down that path because it hurts. So focus on other things. And you know what? Um, your subconscious mind can't project into the future. Only your conscious mind can, but it's your subconscious mind which is unconscious, your subconscious mind is what manifests your reality. So you need to fix the subconscious mind. Now, what we do is we stop telling stories, we stop projecting negatively into the future because whatever you're saying and whatever you're thinking over and over again, you're creating. So we can even apply this when it comes to finances because it's the same energy, fertility, finances, diet, one-to-one -one relationships, it's all the same energy. Hey Leanne, thanks for watching. Getting into some juicy bits now. It's a very long live and I do recommend ladies that you start from the beginning. Now that if you're joining now, but listen to this bit and then go back and listen to the stuff at the beginning. Okay, so where was I up to? Um, you wanna, we've already told, spoken about, just to recap for you Leanne, we've already spoken about having that belief, that inner belief and that inner knowing and then really go through the mind and make sure, hey, what am I thinking? Because what I'm thinking is creating my reality. And then it leads on to, well, I was talking about telling stories. So if people are saying, how are you going? Or if you're constantly thinking in your mind, I just can't get pregnant, I just can't get pregnant, it's so difficult for me to get pregnant, when am I gonna have this baby? Or all these different events are cropping up in my life, time consuming events, emotionally consuming events, uh, whatever that may be. And there could be an underlying belief that, oh, now my fertility is on hold, or how can I get pregnant when this is going on and it's so stressful? Because we're focusing on the stress. Hi Lucy, thanks for joining. And so we want to reshape that. And Lucy, I'm just diving into some techniques on how to bring in more abundance through having your baby, abundant health or abundant wealth, because energetically, it's our sacral chakra, it's the same energy center. So if you have a belief, for example, that money is coming to my account every single day and you just you know you know what you don't want and you're looking at all your bills accumulating and you're looking at your bank statements and you're getting stressed and instead of you living that that state of oh my god I'm so stressed and in that lack mentality how am I gonna make this happen how am I gonna make do I have to work harder do I need to take a second job um, all that kind of stuff what happens is you're creating lack and you're blocking the flow and life's not about working hard. When it comes to receiving abundance, the sacral chakra energy, receiving baby, receiving finance, financial support or finances, um, receiving joy, receiving abundant health and well-being, anything that affects one-to-one -one relationships, the key is to have that belief. Don't look at what's happening now. Don't live what's happening now. Project positively into the future that 
you know, money is coming to me every single day. When you have that belief, you watch it happen out of the blue. So when you're looking at your statements, you go, oh, um, right, I've only got, for example, 2,000 pounds in my account. I have rent due worth two and a half thousand pounds. I don't know where the 500 is going to come, but I know in the next four days it's going to come. I don't know how or where or when. And it just happens. It just happens. So this is great for a lot of women in, um, who are doing my course who have told me that they've got some financial struggles. If you've got financial struggles, it's reflected in your fertility as well. You don't just have abundance in one area. It, abundance is across all levels. So if you're already abundant with money, and that's the majority of my clients, they don't have money issues. They can manifest money like that. It's the men that some of them struggle with, and of course the baby, which is why, why they meet me. So how do we move into that? So you stop telling your story. Stop focusing on the reality of what is. Like I was giving the example of the hard, hard facing physical bank statement. Like that's all that there is. I'm not, I'm not just gonna keep focusing on that. I'm gonna focus on what I, what I believe is actually coming to me. And you allow it to happen. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I know it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. And when you are in that state, and you can only know because you have the trust, but who is it that you're trusting? Are you trusting your body? And it's difficult to always trust your body. I get that because you you feel that your body's letting you down. I get that, but you know what? Your body's not letting you down. I'm just gonna give you a little wave. Um, your body's not letting you down. You may be disappointed with what's happening, but shift your mindset. So for example, when I had uh, hormone imbalances and I had physical proof, I had test results in front of me, I decided, that at the beginning of January 1st, for my New Year's resolution a little while ago, I'm gonna be perfectly healthy. I'm gonna have the energy that I want. And I created that shift. I created that shift. So when you believe it enough, you can create it. We know that the mind has a map of the body. Shift what the map is doing and the body changes too. But it's not that simple. You can add things like adding healing. So Qi Gong or Qigong, which stands for energy cultivation, building energy. Working with that really does transform you on a cellular level. Working with eating natural organic foods. Organic foods are natural foods, okay? They're not gonna destroy your gut health. When your gut health is out, and your gut health is easily out when you're having non-organic food because of the herbicides, fungicides, and pesticides, your gut will put your moods out and when your moods are out and your hormones are out, you feel very out of control. So we wanna have good gut health. There's a strong correlation between good gut health and fertility. So please, if you're on the right path and you've already, you could be watching this going, yeah, yeah, I'm doing my fertility detoxes. Yeah, I'm taking my supplements. Yeah, I support my digestive system. Good, give yourself a big tick because your body is getting stronger every day and you might be feeling bombarded that, oh, all these backward steps, like I thought I was getting better with my health, but now I've got the flu, or now I've got this or that. See it as being released from the body instead of living the fact that, oh, I'm so, you might not say this, I'm, I'm so sickly, I've got this wrong with me, that wrong with me, I can't wait to, to feel better. Focus more on, this is just releasing, and I'm, I'm on the path to, to being better. I'm perfectly healthy. I'm a perfectly healthy, vibrant, fertile woman. Have that as a belief because that's where the big change will happen. And so that's why I encourage you to delve deeper. What is actually in your mind? What are you telling yourself? And what are you telling others when it comes to your fertility, your health, your well-being, or your abundance? Because all of these influence your fertility. So I'm hoping that I helped you with your question. Thank you so much for submitting the question. Like I said, it is anonymous, so I'm not gonna mention her name. And for anyone else, if you have any questions or comments, leave them now because I'm gonna wrap this up. Otherwise, you can leave them in the comments box below. And it's a deep subject. You know, how do you keep that hope alive? It's about shifting your beliefs. At the moment, you're sick and tired of not having what you want. So shift your mindset into the belief that you're having this. And in many ways, it can be easier to manifest a baby because I've mentioned this before, there's up to nine babies for each woman here on earth. Nine baby spirits ready to come down. There's no shortage of babies, no lack. Baby has free will. The only thing that would be holding baby up 
would be either, you know, basically when they're born, and it depends on the where the planets are situated, and therefore it affects their star sign and, and their personality. It does. It does. It's much deeper than a lot of us realize. It's not just um, some mumbo jumbo stuff that we can read in the papers. For, for those that truly do study astrology, it is paramount. All the world leaders make big decisions based on astrology. So it does work. It is powerful. And baby can choose when to come down. But because there's nine, then baby might say, look, I'll be the second one to come down or I'll be the third one to come down as opposed to the first because it's waiting for another cycle to pass. You know, it's completely up to baby. Baby has free will. The other thing that hinders or speeds up baby coming is the energy between you and your partner. It's important to have a connection. I know that there are a lot of women who have to do um, IVF or, you know, not even use a, a person's sperm who they know. And if that's the case, then there's different techniques that I can help you with. But if you have a relationship with the, the father of the child, of your future child, then you're looking at your energy. So imagine it like a circle, your energy field and your energy vibration and your the the essence of how that's vibrating, what that feels like for others in your presence, what your energy is. Then your partners, what their energy is, that creates a third circle, a, a third energy field called your relationship. And this is the, the energy field that your child enters. If it's loving and lustful and, and full of support, then it's it's an easy way to draw baby to you. And if it's one that's full of tension, heartache, stress, fear, um, you know, game playing, whatever it may be, or misunderstanding each other's love languages, then this is going to be difficult for baby to enter, which is why I've got different modules in the course talking about, you know, where's your energy leaking and um, different levels of love and how to understand each other's love languages. All of this is really, really, really important. It all adds up. So if you can dive into more of the course, that's what I recommend. Really sift through. You know, you've got the 12 basic modules plus you've got nine additional modules. Go into the ones that, that you're drawn to. There's some very powerful meditations in there and they can help you to overcome what these barriers are to baby coming and you will be intuitively guided. Just sitting in meditation, stilling your mind, you will be given information because when you're working with me, you're entering my vortex. And my vortex is full of over a decade of experience. I have been working with Kuan Yin in many, many, many lifetimes. I, and having that energy essence, it's like you're under my umbrella, you're under my care, you're under my wing. And I'm able to bring these higher energies in for you. So trust in the process. If you don't believe that what you're doing is going to work, it won't work. There's an American Indian saying that say, you'll only heal in a way that you think you'll heal. Which is why a lot of doctors say something like 70% of all operations and all supplements are basically placebos. Like a lot of back operation, um, there's a lot of information about that recently. Back operations are unnecessary because it's all placebo. So you believe I've had this operation, therefore my back is fixed and the pain genuinely stops. But it goes beyond that. Often back pain is due to emotional reasons and it's, there's a huge link to personality types um, and wanting to really please others. So it's a beautiful time for you to really look at who you are. What is the energy bubble that you have? Because your energy bubble, your baby's going to enter first of all through the union of the bubble between you and your partner or you and the, the baby's future father. And then that's going to reside, the child's going to reside within your energy field, your energy bubble for nine months plus two years once it's born. So it's going to think and feel everything you do. So if you're in a state of anxiety, tension, disharmony, it's too chaotic and too stressful for the child to take on. So look at ways where you genuinely do not allow other things and circumstances, people, situations to drain your energy. It's not worth it. Reclaim these things, cut the cords, connect to your inner strength. And even if dramas are happening all around you that you cannot help, and I genuinely understand that that is a real case for a number of my clients right now, do realize that you don't have to give all your energy away to it. And if you ignite that belief that no matter what is happening around me, I am strong, I am fertile, my body's becoming healthier every day, I am having this baby, you will have this baby. 
It's when the other stuff crops up like, oh, look at all these dramas. This is going to be preventing me from having my baby. I can't handle this and I can't handle that and I don't like this and I don't like that. Even if it's not that dramatic, but just the little things etching away at you, they add up. And that's what drains the energy which you need for fertility and it, it blocks baby. So I'd like you to keep listening to this video over and over again if you need to. Um, it depends on what medium you're watching. It, it is going to be uploaded to YouTube if it hasn't been already, depending on when you're watching this. So please dive deep. There's a lot of gems in here. And if you have any more questions and you'd like some personalized guidance, let me know because that's what Fertility Q&A Wednesday is all about, helping you to become a mum as soon as possible, to end the misery and suffering that you are going through month by month because you don't have to. You don't have to. And if you are, it's blocking fertility. So on that note, beautiful women, thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to say I am showering you with infinite fertility blessings. Thank you.